Good morning from Wanaka, everybody. And the saga continues where I think my lenses are finally fixed. I le left them in the rice bag again overnight. Uh, so it was like 48 hours total, but hopefully they're all good. They seem to be much, much better, which makes me feel a lot better that I didn't lose one of these lenses. So I'm currently out here at hashtag that Wanaka tree. I'm gonna just take a peek at what's going on here. The light isn't like super great as we got out here pretty, pretty late, but um, I figured it's still better than nothing. So we're gonna check it out and see what's going on here before we head up to Mount Aspiring National Park today. I'm um, trying to figure out where to go. It's crazy we only have like three or four days left of the trip. It's just, it's really nuts. So this is the Wanaka tree that is really famous you see it all over instagram it is quite picturesque i'm gonna try to find a little composition somewhere there are certainly a lot of people who are trying to do the same thing so i think a long exposure could look pretty cool and it'd be something that would just be different than taking a standard photograph um, and making the same image that a lot of people probably do not that people haven't done long exposures here but i'm just trying to think out the box right now especially as the lightning is kind of so so it might just try a simple Maybe center weighted composition, long exposure. Um, as the sun is kind of filling from the side rather than shooting into the sun and see how that works. So let's give it a shot. So the image currently isn't working out as well as I wanted to. I think a big reason right now is I'm losing a lot of the tree and kind of the, the background of this mountain here. And I need a little more like contrast to it. So there's like a little uh, snow-capped mountains in the back with some more color in it. So I think if I just kind of change my composition a little bit, um, it might be able to get the tree out a little more. So I'm gonna try to change it up a little bit and see if we can get something else. But if not, I'm definitely just gonna have to come back with better lighting, maybe sunrise or sunset and see how that works. So let's give this another go. And I also think it'd be really cool to kind of stand down by the shore with a big lens, like a 7200, um, something that will really compress the background and really focus in on the Wanaka tree and basically melt away the background. So I certainly want to try that uh, before I leave here. But I did really enjoy the long exposures. I was shooting around like a five to six second exposure time, which was really, really cool. And it was creating all this movement in the water. I think it's time to head out to Mount Aspiring National Park. We're currently at the Blue Pools and it looks like it is a 30 minute return hike, which should not be bad. What do you say, mate? Let's get her done, boys. <laughs> Feels like we're out here in like the Olympic rainforest or something, just socked in, super mossy, beautiful colors again. It truly is spectacular. The diversity of the terrain here really is just something else. And uh, we experienced a little bit of everything from waterfalls to mountains, beaches, and now we're back up in here in the uh, on aspiring national park it did start raining as we neared the park but it doesn't seem too bad just a light light drizzle so we made it out to the bridge and it looks like one to ten people it shows that it's okay anything more than ten looks like you're going down so I saw you load it up. <laughs> Currently on the suspension bridge. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, the water is so blue too. I don't even know what this bridge is called, but look at all the people down there too on the shore. This is awesome. We've come to another bridge here, except this one has capacity of 20 people instead of 10. What do we got here? Welcome to the blue pools. We came down on the beach here, um, and it is absolutely remarkable. There's these little sand flies everywhere, which makes sense as we were literally on the sand, but you could tell that the water certainly comes up here at some point, just with how smooth the rocks are. Um, we're right on the riverbed. It is really spectacular. And 
Man, just like the landscape here is really cool. Even though, again, it's been raining, which I feel like it has been for most of this trip, I mean, it really just adds to the whole kind of vibe and, and really tells the true story of what goes on out here. And the trees here are like something you see in a rainforest or a very like kind of tropical uh, wet place, which seems like it is. And the suspension bridge really adds character to it and um, kind of adds its own unique personality. And then the waters here are just so blue. I'm not really sure what makes them blue. So if you know what makes them blue, um, I'd definitely like to know. Usually it's like glacial deposits uh, that make things this blue, but I'm not sure if that is the case out here. So we're out here at the Blue Pools and Mount Aspiring National Park, and it really is uh, spectacular. Rain or shine, like anything here in New Zealand. What do you think of the rocks? Yeah, like this is green. I don't know why, but it's like literally looks jade. Like this is real, my bracelet's jade. It's green. This one is like shimmery. It looks like there's glitter on it. Yeah. Look how tall it Look is. Look how big that piece I'm, I'm like is. I'm like five foot six. That's pretty steep. Yeah. Real question is, do we put one on top? I say we try to put one up, but what if we knock yeah, it down? That's what I'm saying. I don't know the theories behind this, but... We're going to try to put this little guy on this big piece rock. We think if, if it falls down and we're trying to add to it, we think that's okay. But obviously knocking down a piece rock is not okay. We're going to try to make it bigger, even if it's just a little bit. I think if we have total good energy, it's going to stay. Now we are part of this awesome piece rock. Like I said, even if it's just a little bit, we'll we're forever it. in New Zealand. Woo! Going back across the suspension bridge. A few more hours of daylight left, so we just saw this sign for a place called Fantail Falls. It was a two minute walk, so we figured why not. There she is, that's a big one. Ooh. At Fantail Falls, I think we're gonna go up to Thunder Creek Falls and then come up to this Roaring Billy, and then probably come back and head back to Wanaka. We've arrived out here at Thunder Creek Falls. Basically, there's this massive single tier fall just dropping out of the cliff side. Um, again, it was like a five minute walk, so super accessible. Massive, massive waterfall. Um, Thunder Creek Falls, pretty cool. A little bit longer than the other ones, 25 minutes, 1K return. But it should be a nice little way to end the exploration of Mount Aspiring National Park before we head back to Wanaka. After you, laddie. I wonder why there's a gate in the first place. Was there cool. a rainforest version of Narnia? Uh, yeah, this is it. Oh, sh Look how cool this is, guys. Pretty incredible. They don't call it Roaring Billy for nothing. Damn right. Looks like we made it out here to Roaring Billy. <laughs> <laughs> the rain picked up a little bit, though. A lot of bit. Really hear why they call it Roaring Billy. And I feel like we've been just doused in rain for the entirety of this trip. Yeah. Those are at least the three falls here that are marked along Mount Spiring uh, National Park Road. So definitely glad that we checked them all out, but it's definitely about an hour till sunset-ish. So I think we're gonna work our way back to Wanaka, especially as the rain starts to fall a little harder here. trying to do some astrophotography um, because Wanaka is known as having one of the darkest skies really in all of the country. There's a ton of moonlight right now, so certainly not the darkest of skies. There's a few stars out, um, but certainly not what I was kind of hoping for, but there's nothing we can do. And a lot of times you can get some cool light uh, with the moonlight and play around with that. So I'm gonna shoot around here for a little bit and see what we can come up with. And I'll put some of the pictures that I get uh, right in here whether they are good or not. So let's give this a go. Something that really, really caught my eye as I was kind of sitting here trying to figure out 
um, another composition, another shot to take, um, was just kind of how cool the clouds look uh, with the stars in the back. It's kind of like that blue hour-ish with so much moonlight, it really lights it all up. So I actually just kind of resorted to shooting a night lapse right now. I have like these really cool trees as kind of like anchors and leading lines along the shoreline. Um, as the clouds kind of whiffs across the sky with a little bit of stars in the background. Anyways, thank you guys so, so very much for watching this episode of Exploring a Mount Aspiring National Park and more. And I hope you enjoy this night lapse to finish it up. Yeah.